<laughs> I get it. The gloves are off. All right, let's do this. Darlene won't commit to being serious because she's afraid to be vulnerable. And you seem like a lunatic. Okay, my turn, my turn. I am afraid to be vulnerable because he's too old to have never been married, and I think there's something broken inside there. Who says I'm not married? You barely know me. Let's go. That's my dad. Oh, why can't I meet him? Oh, we got to do this one con at a time. You barely got past Becky. <laughs> what up, Daddy-O? Picking up lunch for my crew. No need to lie to me, Dad. Enjoy your four meals. <laughs> hey, Dan. Hey, Louise. Remember we were talking about your band and I couldn't remember the name of that group I used to like? Found them. Oh, my God. Baby Huey and the Babysitters. Messing with the kid. You can call it what you want, but I call it messing with the kid. Wow. You know, right when I left Lanford, I got to Chicago, I sat in with them. No. Oh, yeah. Then they looked over, saw me sitting on the edge of the stage, and I got thrown out. <laughs> so nice to have you back. I remember you packing your drums in the back of your LeBaron after graduation and heading out to Chicago with your band. Yeah, that was the beginning of the long, slow climb to the bottom. Well, I was jealous of you. I still kick myself for not taking my guitar and hitting the road like you did. Mm, don't beat yourself up. You were terrible. I'm OK with that. I'm kind of the Jimmy Page of drywall. <laughs> so I have a little surprise for you, too. I have an extra ticket for an oldies concert in Ravinia tomorrow night. You want to go with me and my buddies? Who's playing? Oh, just a bunch of bands from the 60s and 70s. What's left of them, anyway? <laughs> There's uh, Gladys Knight and the Pip. Uh, the Two Tops. And a Righteous Brother. I'm going on the odd chance I get to see One Dog Night. <laughs> is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Harris, what happened? Are you okay? She's fine. Are you the mom? No, I'm the aunt. What happened? She got caught drinking in the woods with some of her friends. I'm the only one who didn't get away because I was wearing heels. Why were you wearing heels in the woods? There was a guy there that I liked, and I wanted my ass to look good. You must be very proud. Thank you, officer. I can take it from here. Fine. Just tell her parents that she's been hanging with a bad crowd. I really hope I don't have to come back to this house again. That's what everyone says. <laughs> come back here. All right, let's have the lecture. Yeah, you're going to get a lecture. First, you got to figure out your escape route before you get hammered. <laughs> and make sure it's downhill so if you trip, you can roll out of danger. Wait, what? And if you're with a nerdy girl, push her down at the first sight of trouble. You get away, she gets a cool reputation, it's a win-win. Why are you telling me this? Because even though I'm not happy that you were drinking, I don't want you getting caught because your friends are stupid. Thank you. You know, I gotta tell you, I'm kind of surprised that you're even helping me. I didn't think you liked me. Of course I like you, why would you think that? Because I've been here for a year and you've barely talked to me. OK, sit down. <sighs> Remember that Christmas when you were eight and I wanted you to see what a really strong woman was, so I showed you Kill Bill? Yeah, some more decapitations than I've seen before or since. <laughs> but your mom totally flipped out on me. Ever since that, Everything I do or say around you, I'm worried your mom's going to freak out about. And I'm not judging your mom. We're different people. I'm cool, and she's an uptight psycho. 
Are you cool enough to not tell my mom about tonight? <sighs> okay, here's the deal. Stop drinking in the woods. And I'll give you this one pass as a cool aunt. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It will never happen again. But you can't ever tell her that I didn't tell her. Why would I do that? That would be telling her. <laughs> there will be a time when you guys are hanging out and you'll feel like you're friends and you'll want to share everything. Do not fall for that. It's a trap. <laughs> Somebody's been to the back of her closet. Yeah, well, that's why I wore the shawl over here. No, uh, Peter's doing a project for his master's degree in Nordic history, so we're simulating the daily life of a couple in medieval Norway. Why? Um, it's a interdisciplinary study where he's trying to document the sociology of relationships at that time. And unless we replicate the experiences exactly, then it invalidates the... I haven't had enough coffee to, to have this conversation. So you don't get to use any modern conveniences? Well, you guys just don't know the joy of living close to the earth. Do you have a um, wire brush I can borrow? I have to scrape the fur off a squirrel. You're eating a squirrel? Well, many squirrels. While they're hibernating, there's not a lot to them. OK, guys. Here's your salami pancake sandwiches. You may want to trade these. OK, who's using the washing machine? Oh, I don't know, the people who live here. <laughs> Do you know Louise Goldovsky? She works at the restaurant now. Yeah, she was in Dan and Roseanne's class. Star of the talent show. <laughs> Every year, she and her stupid band would go long while somebody with a very moving rifle twirling routine couldn't even get up on stage. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure she made a move on Dad yesterday. Oh, you're kidding. What did he do? He had no clue. Oh, no, no. He's been out of the game for too long. He has no idea how vicious these gals can be. With a fresh widower in their sight stands a mouse in a field, and she's like this hawk with her talons. You've changed since you started hunting your own food. I'm telling you. He's a catch. We should warn him. It's weird. I've never thought of dad as a catch. Are you kidding me? At his age, he can fall down and get up on his own. The ladies love it. I'm going to grab a bite. I'll be back later to do my laundry. I got it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be out in the yard. I got to look for a stick in the shape of a fork. Hi, can I help you? Is Harris Healy here? Uh, no, she's in school. Is something wrong? She left this in my squad car. My daughter was in your car? Why? I guess your sister didn't tell you. I caught her in the woods drinking last night. What? You gotta be kidding me. Um, okay, well, thank you for bringing her home safe. By the way, there's gonna be reports of screaming from this house later. You guys should just ignore that. <laughs> What you doing? Um, cutting vegetables with a rock. You want to help me? It's infuriating. Go to Dagen, woman. I bring nourishment from the sea. Did you buy that at a store? I got it from the fish market. I bartered for it, trading them zinc, nickel, and copper. Someday they will call them coins. I'm cutting a turnip with a rock, and you went out and bought a fish. Well, the important thing is that I have provided dinner in a historically accurate way. I will now leave you to clean the fish while I retire to the living room to play my shinbone flute. No, 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 no. I scraped the fur off a squirrel. You're gutting the fish. I need a couple of hours without the smell of death on my fingers. Viking women were often overwhelmed by their chores, but generally suffered in silence. <laughs> the only thing I know about Vikings is from Hagar. And from what I remember...